Ladies and gentlemen, this is the game you've been waiting for. I'm Sideshow, with me is Buick, that's Keith Smurbeck on the microphone with me, we're Team Fortress TV, and uh, with Matsad on production, we're bringing you the pros versus the YouTubers, that's right, it's a 6 versus 9 community event, where Froyotech are taking on uh, a veritable smorgasbord here, Buick, of YouTube personalities. Yes, 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 my friend. To go through their roster really quickly, just because, you know, we will be starting real soon. Our scout will be Scott Jaw, Soldier, Uncle Dane, Pyro Retro. Uh, our demo knight will be King Raja. Heavy will be a Funke. Funke? Is that Tobias? I mean, am I looking for him? Uh, 400 ping engineer, Moose Selk, Medic Array 7, Sniper Jimmy, Spy Salty Fish. So that, yeah. that's the lineup that you know and you love, folks. And uh, facing them is the classic for your tech lineup. That's uh, Shade on Medic, the one on Devon and the Soldiers, Pocket, Banny, Roma, Blaze, and the two scouts, Clockwork and Ash. The maps are going to be Badlands, uh, which is the 5CP map. It's a staple of all 6v6 uh, around the world. We're then going to be moving on to Badwater and Gravel Pit to finish things off. So two out of the three maps really favor the Highlander team here full of the youtubers but this first one favors for you take a little bit smurbeck let's have a look at our first mid fight absolutely ready all right so they get here on time blaze and shade moving in banny's gonna jump to engineer now engineer putting up a mini sentry banny takes him down sentry to scott jaw as well uh they're just falling absolutely everything we've not seen blue lose any players yet whatsoever their health is all fine too they just almost looks like they're doing the old uh let's hold two strategy side show your thoughts on this uh, it's a good one. They did lose four players right at the beginning, though, so that might hurt them a little bit. Raj goes in for a fight on the flank, but Banny's going to take him out with the help of Shade. He's down Jimmy as well. These other players are getting swarmed upon. Array 7 has his crit streak. Oh, actually, he might not. No, he was just running the normal medigun there, actually, and it was only on 40%. He was just healing a buffed heavy for that entire time, so his, uh, his medigun did not build that uber as effectively as it could have done. Salty Fish going to pop off his dead ringer and then Crater! And that's the double death there from uh, Salty Fish as Free Attack get into the upper lobby and it's gonna be difficult for them to hold on to this last point. Uh, <laughs> only three players left alive. The one is gonna be putting stickies on the point and our YouTubers here collapsing quickly in the first round. But I think uh, I think they could do it. They could pull it out of the back. They just need to not have half of their team try and hold second and half of their team rush into mid. You really have to be coordinated if you want to take down for your take despite having three extra players. Indeed, I would like to see them come, you know, come and have a nice fight on mid this time. Something to point out too, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the whitelist situation here. Like, take a look at the lineup, the loadouts and some of the covers. And Brota Cav, who are on the Rap Assassin. Look at Ash looking down there for his Rap Assassin, just waiting for his victim. Salty Fish, the first one that is going to be his victim. Um, they are going for the Let's Hold 2 strategy again. Salty Fish's Dead Ringer is popping off. He's coming up through Shithouse right now. We'll see if he goes for anything. Retro is going to fall. Uh, there is a call on a quick fix. The quick fix, Uber, he's running quick fix now. So quick fix is absolutely full. Perhaps that can help stem some pressure. Uh, Scott Jaw going down on the back side. Uh, Ash coming in here. The quick fix does get popped off. They don't really know what to do with it. Raja, who, you know, throwing down some stickies there. You see what he's doing? We're expecting that. Him and Duwan. Yeah, they down. destroyed Shade. Shade, <gasps> Shade popped oh, off man. his quick streak, which was the perfect counter to the uh, to the quick fix coming out of Array 7. But Raja, stickies find their target. Big damage from him, and it's actually it's really difficult to do the maths here. But there is a player advantage. Oh no, with Salty Fish going down, and uh, there falls a retro. Clockwork and Ash are just getting in behind everybody, and they just can't figure out where they are. Muse Elk's going to be rolling into that upper lobby, but Ash is still kind of stuck behind. Scott Look Josh at that. banks him. Oh man, absolutely that was... destroyed. Did you and see then that? Clockwork taken down as well. That was a two shot there from uh, from Scott Jaw. He came and uh, shoved that Australian. Uh, a scattergun launcher, a scattergun launcher one of the game of my plane. Scattergun where the sun does not shine, so Ash got destroyed there. And Array 7 has that quick fix, he's gonna pop it off, he dropped everybody though! It's only Funke here, coming in through the choke point, and uh, Froyutek gonna wanna make advantage of this. Indeed, so they're backing out, they're putting pressure on his head right now. So get this spy up there with the ambi, he's gonna try to take some headshots, you know, they're hitting them, but with the quick fix, this heavy's taking a lot more than they perhaps think he does. He eventually goes down to Banny shooting the Australian rocket launcher. Uh, the med disc, it does get separated from everybody, but he does get jumped 
Banny taking full advantage of the med being out of position, jumping him, killing him, and now Red is going to have to set up shop on last. We'll see if maybe there's any kind of cheeky things going out on two. I see nothing so far. Raja kind of holding off the bottom middle right here. He's going to end up backing up to the last point. He's going to throw some stickies on the point. He does know you must be doing that. But uh, Blaze coming in, bouncing the stickies off. Blaze versus Raja. Whoa, he gets help. He goes down. He needs to be careful with just the heavy left. We are. Sasha, this could be another point for Blue Team. I think it is, and there we go, 2-0 to Froyo Tech. I think uh, Musak's running that uh, the Gunslinger engine here. I think maybe what the uh, what the, the YouTubers need to do here is maybe set up their defense a little bit more, allow Froyo Tech to push into them, and then crush them with the player advantage. But if they keep bleeding players like this, then uh, it, they're going to find it really difficult to hold on to it. So another mid fight. Let's see what the plan is here from our Highlander YouTube team. Clockwork and Blaze going very deep, but they're straight into the reset. Blaze is just diving in, seeing what he can get done. Uncle Dane goes straight down retro, really weak as well, but it's going to be Muselk's Gunslinger sentry there. Mini sentry taking down the Romy soldier for Froyo Tech, and they are two down now. See, if I was the uh, if I was King Raja and his uh, posse of YouTubers, I'd be wanting to push in through that choke point and see what I could get done. Solif is chilling on the box behind, eventually does go down. Shay does have his full crit freak up. We'll see who's going to get it. Uh, I'd imagine they gave it to Vanny or Duana rounding the corner here. Uh, Duana is loading up his stickies. Looks like they're going in for a crits right now, loading up his pipes right now, too. Shay's almost going to pop this off. We'll see what Duana can do. Shay's going to hit the crits any second now. Uh, Raj is close. He needs to be careful. They end up backing off, though. There's just too much over there. If Uncle Dane going down the backside, looks like they're rotating house, potentially, with some of their buffs. Uh, Duan is just kind of keeping people in check. Uh, the crits is going to be coming through the back side right now. It does end up going off. Danny with one kill on the Raja. Uh, he is on fire now. He needs to be careful right there not to get any reflex kills of any sort. So takes down Retro. And looks like they're going to slowly be able to take Yard. And as Red Medic falls, Red's got to set up a defense on Lab, my friend. They do indeed. Uh, the Pyro of Retro, they know it to be seen. It would have been fantastic for him to get a few reflects in there and uh, get those crockets firing straight back into Banny's face, but it was not to be. And uh, <laughs> as I see here, Funk uh, chowing down on a sandwich on Lask and ready to defend. It's, uh, it's all on the YouTubers not to take this to a very early 3-0. There goes Retro though, he keeps trying to take the 1v1 That's the first frag I've really seen come out from Jimmy as he takes down Banny. Nice. That's going to help them out a lot. Maybe they can even think about prodding into a lobby here. Salty Fish coming behind on a flank as well. And Clocker is trying to get a lot of room. Nice stuff from Jimmy once again there. And look at Salty Fish trying to win. Trying to work his way in behind. He's behind Ash. Ash has spotted him. He's taking that fight in upper lobby. Ash is going for the melee kill here. Who's going to come out on top? It's going to be Retro. He does back up into the pyro right now. Suddenly, no shade does have his Crits Creek full again. I think this might be the let's bait them out and just use the Crits Creek type play. Duana does have the beam on him soon. Uh, shade is still not popped it yet. There's really no need to if they just keep feeding him. Like as Jimmy comes out to go for another headshot because he hit two pretty good defending last there. Got a little bit overzealous, ends up dying. Um, with the Crits full, do you think is it just going to be Banny screaming for it right now? Is he, is he in the mood to just frag some YouTubers? Is that what we're feeling? Oh, he's loving it. He's jealous that he didn't get invited to the whole uh, the whole YouTube team. He's a YouTuber. He's not a pro. But there goes Ash straight onto the point. And Musak taking him in a 1v1. Is he going to be able to do it? And Musak wins that melee 1v1 there against Ash. The taunt on the point as well to save it. Big plays from the, uh, the Australian engineer there to be able to defend that for his team. They're still 2-0 down, though. They need to start pushing out from their last point. Salty Fish again trying to... Make things happen further forwards. Banny misses an air shot there onto Uncle Dane as well. Uncle Dane escapes with his life. And it's Clockwork harassing everybody behind King Raja. Gets some nice stickies out actually, but can't quite find the frag on Clockwork. Mm -hmm. The salty fish taking down Banny. Blue is missing their soldiers right here, but you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as Clockwork has an over buff, we know what he's going to do with it as he's creeping up through Lager. And now he sees Scotch on his eyes. He ends up meeting Uncle Dane instead. And this is the, this is the Froyo Tech scout combo going against people who aren't looking at them. And that's not going to end too well. Um, with Shade seeing on 82% crits, um, they may just push in with uh, Steve off in the upper right. They need to be careful. Um, 100% crits are using it right now. Here we go. Crits going off into one. They can get one, two, and they just tap it. Everybody runs away from the crit side show, and it just opens up the point. Yeah, the uh, the thing that these YouTubers need to be doing, they they have the Highlander team, so they have one of every class. So 
that means that they're they're great if they all play together. They need to be playing around the same location, making sure that they cover each other's backs in all of these situations, uh, and don't allow themselves to get picked off by the double soldier or double scout. And he's going to go really deep into the <laughs> into the beast. So Sorry fish instantly taken down, along with Uncle Dane. But they might still be able to make something happen. King Rush has got a sticky trap up, I think, somewhere around this uh, somewhere around this choke area. And as the rest of Froyotech attempt to push in, they're going to be meeting some uh, stiff resistance. So Ray Seven's got his quick fakes up, and Funk is taking the first frag onto Blaze. They may be thinking about pushing in through the choke bomb. Shade's about to reply with a crit screen here. I think it's going to be on Steve. He is indeed nine health with the crit screen going down. Raja, Pinte going down. Medic, excuse me, the demo and the heavy both gone. Uh, Jimmy going down the other side too. That's a lot of crit sticky kills, my friend. Um, and they more or less can just walk their way up on the second point. There is somebody causing some issues behind. Banny's trying to take him out. Banny with a crisp rocket on the Scott Shaw trying to run away and hits. Oh! Uncle destroys Uncle Dane with another one. Uncle Dane doesn't know what to do. Hopefully he runs away. Yes, he does get out, but he's being chased. That scout will not let him go, and he does take him down. Ash knew that he was bleeding, and he finished it off. Uh, Ash poking last point. We'll see if Raja's stickies can end up holding anything off right now. The heavy is just spamming everywhere to his heart's content. Uh, with the Crits Creek sitting on 52%, I have a feeling unless Clockwork uh, kills another dispenser. King of uh, Raja. Did you see that? In with the big pipe? pipes, destroying Ash on that bottom left hand side, absolutely bringing out the Demon Man skills. Now he's trying to hit a crazy one onto Blaze as well on that bottom left. Blaze has stumbled into a sentry as well, they know where it is, but he's gonna go down to another pipe from King Raja. The, uh, his Highness laying down the pipe work here, absolute destruction. But in on the other side, here comes the Wartner showing him how Demon Man's done as well. Raining down those crit stick, he takes down the sentry as well. And the only player left alive is King Raja. Can he defend it? Quite. He's been the throne for this round, my friend. It is 4 0 to the world champions, Froyotech. Uh, something I did want to point out. Have you seen any interesting, keep in mind, as we mentioned, you know, preparation for matchmaking or what have you, the whitelist is open in this game right now. Have you seen anything interesting from either of the teams uh, item wise? I have seen Mad Milk from both of the scouts, so something to think about there. Yeah, definitely. I'll be keeping my eyes on it for the uh, the rest of the engagements. They know that Salty Fish has been coming through this valley, and he really hasn't had too much luck so far getting on to anybody. So we'll see if he can change it around this time. He knows where they're going to be coming from. They're going to be putting up that defensive choke. Tim Raja hit that big pipe onto everybody, and he's got the backup from this heavy as well. But Funk just couldn't quite track Ash there as he jiggled through the air, and I believe they've found Salty Fish. They have indeed. They've found Salty Fish in the background as well. But They've managed to trade two for two. This should be the point at which the YouTubers really try and press forwards because uh, 7v4 is pretty good for them. But unfortunately, they dropped that heavy. And there goes Uncle Dave as well. Retro is hiding in the little alcove that he gets taken down. And uh, it's it's all up to Muse out. It's level 3 sentry. So it ends up getting Blaze there. Blaze jumps in, kills the medic, and as a retort, ends up dying to the sentry gun. But you'll take that trade any day of the week. With Ash on the second point, and then everybody just dealing with the sentry gun over there. Look at this sentry. Look how much spam this sentry is taking. Muzelk oh, is, is keeping incredible. that alive for days. That sentry gun is never going down. He's got his rescue ranger there, and he's pumping, pumping round after round with that sentry gun. And nobody can get rid of it. Yeah, I know, he's, he's definitely guarding that forward reason fire really, really effectively here. Unfortunately, Ash did cap on the other side. Um, if Froyo decides they just want to ignore that path completely, they can back up, but instead it looks like they kind of wanted to smash it. Smash the toys. They broke every single one of the engineer's toys. Red has, has their spawns. They're hanging out in the upper lobby. They do lose salt and fish again. Blaze comes in. Whew! Jimmy, sniper down. Um... Our Ray 7 needs to hook up with somebody right now. He's going full battle medic mode. Oh, finally hooks up with our, our, our highness, Mr. King Raja. And um, with uh, Ash pushing lower left and not dying, I'm rather impressed. The Chris Creek does go off right now. We do get some spam rockets out. Uh, Shade is on an 8 assist streak with Raja going down with 9 as well. No, and our Ray 7 just doesn't know quite who to connect to. Vanny unstoppable on a 10 kill streak there. And uh, Froyotech able to get on the point. That is a 5 0. The YouTubers unable to put up uh, a decent defense on Badlands, but to be expected, Dash uh, Buick, to be expected because um, 
You know, it, it's very difficult, especially on a map which favours those 6v6 classes. It's all about the transition plays. It's all about how quickly you move from one point to the other. This isn't a Highlander map. The YouTubers are just waiting to uh, to release their final form. Oh, of course, they're, they're, they're licking their chops. They're, they're, they're chomping at the bit to go to this next map, and we both know what that is. It's everybody's favourite. It's Badwater, my friend. You set up it, that it defensive really is lineup. It favourite. It is. It, dude, I cannot get enough Badwater. Even, I it's love many Badwater. years later. I love it. I love it. So, we did see a nice. We saw a five zero there. Um, would you like to see? I mean, YouTubers really probably couldn't have, uh, and you know, push too hard in the mid there with classes. Maybe it was just them getting there, you know, too quick all the time. But they just kind of were complacent enough to just sit on their own point, sit on their second point. I, I would like to see maybe you know a little bit more of aggressive play from them. Would you agree? Yeah, I think one of the things that you can't really do when you're running a Highlander setup is contest mid very quickly, unless you want to use your soldier to whip everybody to, to mid and have your heavy run there quickly. On a map like Badlands, where the choke points entering mid are actually really really small, something like choke or something like house, it's very easy to lock off if the 60s classes are there a little quicker with a lot of health. So I think perhaps a wise decision to stay on second, but in those situations where they managed to actually get a few players down from Froyotech, they were never capitalizing on that. And, uh, you know, that just comes down to um, a, a few different things, you know, not playing together in a team, not having the, the, the same calling or... or um, uh, experience at a higher level but uh, I am just glad that we saw some sick pipes from His Majesty King Raja yeah we did we saw him what he, he took out Ash sometimes and he, I actually saw him take out Ash and then he got another really good kill raid after oh, that each time and that sweet two shot by Scott Jaw he absolutely mullered Ash I think he should replace him I know I know take, take the crown baby take the crown absolutely so, um... All right, so our next map will be Badwater Pro uh, V7 currently. I'm retrying the server. I do need to end up getting in here. So um, with this, would you like wh – what What are you expecting, like, from uh, just the average, you know – we we know the spots for the sentry guns. We know the spots for everything else. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Switch I mean, to stock if Badwater. You, if you think about Badwater and you compare that to – the Badlands. I mean, they do both have bad in the name, but uh, that, uh, as far as similarities go, that is uh, literally where it ends. Because Badwater is your classic. Well, for starters, it's a classic pub map. Everybody knows bad, Badwater. Everybody's played on Badwater. And it's also a fantastic Highlander map. It's terrible for 6v6. It's payload Wasn't for it starters. Wasn't it tried? Didn't E2FTL try? I, I swear do you know what? If they there. did... It was probably before I was born, never mind started playing the game, so it must have been a long time ago. I know that Byte used to play, god, CP Dustball Pro and all sorts of other things. To be fair, they probably did try this back when the game was first made. They were playing CP Well, they were playing CTF2 Fort, I mean, the guys crazy crazy how far we've come in competitive tf2 since then and with matchmaking right around the corner as well Buick, we could be seeing these uh, these kind of games happening all the time uh, which i'm super hyped about but anyway about the map i mean it's a it's a classic uh, payload map right and so the cart maxes out at times three that means that if you want to commit you have to commit like three people to it or a scout plus another person when you only have six people on the team that's a lot of people you come in just to push in the cart and the rest of the people have to go around trying to take down a sentry trying to take down a, a little area a little nest that somebody's locked off trying to assail the roof trying to push people behind whilst also pushing the car this is gonna be difficult for Froyo Tech to push just the sheer numbers advantage of the YouTubers here should definitely play into their hands on Badwater yeah, we did see something to think. Something to keep in mind. I mean, we saw uh, we saw he was protecting the forward spot of that sentry gun. What was it? Rescue Ranger Wrangler combo or something like that? Oh uh, yeah, that was fantastic. How hard that was to take down? Can you imagine on this map when the spots are just completely set up? Regardless. And it's so map. big as well. It's so much bigger to get from one area to another. I think if they have to use one Uber to get from the spawn door all the way up to where the classic sentry position is, on the back right hand side, just above the tunnel here. The, uh, they have to traverse a huge distance with that uber charge and when they've only got five players defending their medic instead of eight that's going to be really difficult 
three, my friend. Something to consider now. Do you think, considering the sixes players, you know, obviously they pug this map, you know? I, I mean, people, if you play TF2, you've played on Badwater. Um, do you think maybe one of the... We're going to see maybe a permanent sniper? You know, it's not as easy when it's Ooh. not a big pub server. You just have six people on your team. Would you like to see maybe... Would you get the feeling maybe Clockwork may, may open up the gates as sniper or something like that? Try to pick their sniper, their med or something? Yeah, forth. I think like, so. I think, that's uh, what I'm feeling. Right off the board, if they start, uh, it looks like they're actually starting on defense as well, and we really haven't even talked about that. But can you imagine trying to defend such a huge, wide open map from nine players? <laughs> it's it's going to be insanely difficult for, for, for you to, to be able to just keep tabs of where everybody is on such a wide open map and be able to focus the cast at different times. So. Um, if the if the YouTubers have their sense about them, this is where they can really punish for your tech. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do on defense. Maybe some crit creek. I used to love doing that. A good crit creek on defense. Yep. Yeah, I'm thinking Shade is just going to end up keeping crit creek in general the whole time. I didn't see them switch off it yet. Something to note is the YouTubers have switched up their lineup. So our boy, oh, our boy Uncle Uncle Dane will be playing NG. We'll be playing NG on this map, and we know he has a lot. He's, I think he's probably played NG on this map, mayhaps, mayhaps more than anybody else. So he, when, when it comes to playing offensive or defensive NG on this map, he definitely knows his stuff. So we do see a lineup switch. Or maybe they weren't happy with how the lineup went last time, or maybe this is just their favorite map, and he just wants to damn well play NG. We'll see what happens it with makes that sense. class switch. It does. It, it makes does sense, make sense, doesn't it? Uncle Dan, the NG man, and Muse Alex the soldier. I mean, it makes perfect sense, apart from the ping. Uh, for you guys, if you can't perhaps see it on the scoreboard there, uh, Muse Alex playing with about 240 <laughs> ping. So not really the best for him. Quite difficult to play the, uh, any kind of projectile class with that kind of ping, but we'll see how it goes down. At the moment, Clockwork is warming up on the sniper. He's rattling off those headshots all over the place. We'll have to see... Uh, whether they can compete with him. They've actually switched up a lot of their classes, so I'm just gonna, gonna wait until the YouTubers go live to see what their final class loadout will be. I guess these guys are fairly flexible. They can play a lot of different classes. They have to for their videos. They have to. Like, people definitely, people want to see them do you know, all, all different, you know, you got, you make YouTube, you know, you're making YouTube videos, you got, you have a certain people who love to watch you do these things, you want to be able to cover multiple classes, you want to be able to play multiple things, and people do enjoy that, and hopefully they will get to see some of their favorite YouTubers play the classes they know and love them as right now, so, I mean, Badwater, like, I just can't get enough of how much Badwater is such a classic map for, you know, the team of nine there. there everybody knows different classes, roles, where you gotta be, what you gotta do on this map, and for a team that plays is so used to scrimming 6v6 on something like Badlands consistently, or Process, like, this is, I, I'm totally, totally eager to see how they're going to take this on defense of Badwater. I see Ash on NG right now. With only six people on your team, I, I, I guess I kind of understand maybe doing that, but we'll see. Do you think Ash is going to know the NG spots? That's the next one. Oh, man. Ash, I don't think Ash has got the knowledge here. He, he probably, he's probably seen some Highlander been played once or twice. He'll probably put the Sentry in the default spot. As for where he puts it after that, goodness knows, he'll probably try and build it on the roof after they've already capped there or something. You'll probably see some hilarious misplays from Ash on Engineer. I would keep my eye on him. So, uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to be rolling out with uh, zero scouts, which is really odd. Scouts normally one of the most powerful classes in the game. You know, you can put out 600 damage in a matter of seconds and really not get hit. You've got fantastic movement speed. But uh, they're actually just opting for the full-on defensive lineup. They've got two soldiers to spam the area, a demo man to lock things down. And uh, now that we're in setup time, Ash is going to be building up that sentry as well. Let's see, has he got the Wrangler equipped for maximum potential? Who knows, he's, he's definitely got the Jag. We do see that right now. So where is Ash currently? Oh, something we did mo mention. Um, so the class is our set right now so they did switch a few things up um scott Jaw will be playing sniper on offense right now salty fish staying spy ray seven going to continue to be medic uh, our boy uncle dane he's 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 going to show us how to play a little bit of engineer maybe the fun engineer um uh thunke tobias tobias thunke himself uh, will be uh 
Uh, he'll be yeah, he'll be rolling with the heavy. We know that Raja will not he will not not play demo. Um, retro, Pyro, Jimmy on Soldier. What do you think? Yeah, so they have switched up a few classes, Sideshow. Uh, do you maybe they're just getting antsy? Maybe they just want to try something new. Like this could be their strong map, and they could be playing their strongest classes. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting. I think that it comes down to whether they play well together rather than uh, who goes huge on which class, but it's certainly nice to see Uncle Dan, the engineer man, this time. I'm watching Clockwork as he is trying to snipe on that left-hand side. He does manage to take down Funkus straight away. Smudge was looking for that return frag, but hasn't actually found anything. Oh, Clockwork finds that frag. Yeah, he so takes down the heavy Scott and sure. the sniper. He's a... Uh... I mean, he's kind of just choner now, scoping in. The sentry gun's doing work. Clockwork doesn't really need to do anything more. He's getting rushed. And he's up getting stabbed by Salty Fish. Oh, boy. That's going to open some things up. Yeah, Jade sat here with the Chris Creek. They're trying to figure out the best time to pop it off. They just need to make sure that Array 7 doesn't actually... Oh, there we go. Array 7 was a force there. So the Ubercharge has gone off on the lower entrance. They're going to be still trying to push that cart through the tunnel as they get their respawners in. Shades popped off his crits creek as well. They're trying to pick the medic, but Duan has missed all of his stickies and can't find any frags on anybody there. And now Duan, oh Shade, almost left in a bit of a pickle there as Raja came in with his, uh, what's he using there, the tide turner. He, uh, he was uh, rushing in there with the tide turner trying to make something happen. Froggy Tech still kind of holding pretty decent, but they've pushed that cart up all the way through the tunnel now. Mm -hmm. So Array 7 is pushing up a Funky on the right side. Uh, they are going up with the Heavy with uh, the Met Gun. I like this time right now. Yeah, they're going to be uh, they're going to be just uh, gathering themselves, ready for another one. Clockwork takes a big pan to the face from King Raja there. Oh, but gets domed for his troubles. Blaze has been taken down, but traded for Muse out of both of the uh, sentries. Getting frags there, Funkers. Thomas Lab is trying to put damage out, but Ash is still building that sentry up, making sure he's repairing it all the time. Here comes Anuba from Array 7. No, no! Array 7 dropped by the stickies of the water on 98%, along with Funky. And uh, and a third there to add to the one as a crit creek spree. That was so close, but they've sacrificed three players for it here, Buick. Yeah, they end up losing their medic too, so they did push up with the water there. You know, what? once you're getting five, six, seven kills, you know, you, you make it, you make it the bloodlust. And it looks like the Watna did. He moved up with his medic. By the time they got, uh, by the time they made it through the tunnel, they kind of got stuck in there, and they ended up doing, uh, losing because of it. So it uh, looks like Blue may end up capping here. Uh, we are going on to uh, let's see what Scotch are taking. Nice little aggressive uh, headshot. Headshot, Scotch are completely saying clockwork. What's up, baby? Your head is gone. So, uh, Scott Jaws taking out Funkers is definitely gonna really help us them push oh, around. Oh, take a look at Blaze. Blaze yeah. is coming in behind everybody. He's managed to take down Scott Jaws. Now, Music on the car. He's gonna. Oh, nice shot on to Music. He's gonna take him down, but now he has to fight the 1v1 against Retro. And all he's got equipped here is the. Uh, oh, no, he doesn't even have the gun buzz. What kind of. A, Oh, he's got the buff banner equipped. So uh, Blaze still doesn't have a shotgun to deal with that pyro, but instead he's just going to come around behind, take down Uncle Dane, the NG main, and it is 4v4, but their clockwork manages to dome King Raja playing that dome man class. And the spawns are going to come in slightly quicker from the re uh, from the YouTubers. They're going to be able to gather around the car. They need to take down Blaze, though. He's harassing them from behind. So Ash is setting up uh, up in the house right there. That's an interesting spot right now. So he's way far back in this team, but I'm guessing they're kind of under the impression that they're going to be losing anyway. We do have a Ray 7 and Funky going down. There are Chris Stickies coming around the corner. Dewan is absolutely destroying everybody with him. Clockwork is the, the Spencer kill, I guess. People are jumping in on their combo right now. Raja going down, Retro going down. As long as Shade can keep up the triage and keep everybody healthy right here, that should be a nice little fine defense in this corner. Like this, this may be difficult for Blue to move up in, especially with losing players like they are. The only thing up for Blue right now is the combo. Uh, Uncle Dane's moving up. We'll see if he can maybe get some gun or so, some something right there. With, with Scotch on moving up, and they kind of Blue, uh, excuse me, Red needs to kind of move out of this little choke point where they are right now. They're just going to beg for getting spammed, whether it's from... <laughs> As I say that, of course, Blaze is behind just killing absolutely everybody. Uh, would, you, would you like to see Blue maybe try to get some height advantage or sneak behind absolutely. like they're doing, Sideshow? 
Yeah, yeah, if they can manage to get up onto that roof area and control that, there's no way for is going to be able to hold in that low ground. Muzelk's in, he's popped off the bonk, he's going to be able to get behind everybody, but Blaze has got 10 kills already. There we go, now Blaze is down, that's left that flank open for the tech, uh, putting themselves in a bit of a sticky position here. They just need everybody from the blue team, everybody from the YouTubers needs to go and fight them on that top ground, but instead... King Raja taking the pan 1v1, takes the pan frag against Clockwork. Now coming up behind, he's going to attempt to get onto uh, Bani. Bani managing to take him down, who is actually playing Scout at the moment. Didn't realize that, he switched off from Pocket onto Scout. Going to take down Ray 7 as well, and he dies. And Froyate just moving around the map so quickly that YouTubers have lost track of where they are, and they need to start fragging them quickly and pushing the cart, otherwise this is going to be a very long time. I think it's something of a, what we consider in our 6v6 world, something of a Highlander line, of a Highlander-esque per se. Oh, uh, Salty so Fish with the backstab on the shade. Insane stuff. Clockwork still bringing off headshots, but uh, nothing's going to make up for the fact that Shade just got rattled there and sent back to the spawn queue and Scott Jaw with uh, another headshot there. I've seen Clockwork him, I've seen well. him hit Great Clockwork. Stuff. Morton Clockwork's got him for sure this game. Like, Scott Shaw's doing a little bit of work on our, on our boy C-Dubs over here, so... Uh. He just hit a big body shot on Banny as well for Funky to finish him off, so... Great stuff there. Funky's just gonna collect an arrow, I think. That was a really nice arrow from a Ray 7. Ray 7's desperately trying to keep his heavy alive. He's just about managed it there, but the pipes from Dewana are gonna be able to take him down. Oh, what a grip pan again! Oh my goodness. Grip pan again, do you mm, So they do you end up capping the, they cap the point right here. We got the scouts kind of getting some space. Uh, Muselk is going up to the left side, takes the health pack. We'll see if he can find anybody over here. Uh, he is moving in right now. He does see a scout. He has to be careful. Uh, as his team is moving down below, he's going back to his buffs, per se. We'll see if... Uh... Oh, yep, they are going in. Look at this. They're moving in right now. He's, he's completely moving in. He's going up around the left side. He does see the dispenser there while the action is going on down below. Salty Fish is going down. He gets that dispenser kill. Oh, he's going around the gun. I like to see what he's doing right here. He's one shot, two shot. He takes oh. down Ash. Oh my goodness. What is he going to be able to get the gun here? Two one shot. He's put another shot in the gun. Two shot, three shot. He's single handedly taking everybody out here. He has to back up. Banny does end up taking him out. But did you see him absolutely dirty work, Ash? He absolutely destroyed him. Ash is getting mullered by these guys. Someone cut him from the pros team. Good, me. It was a complete circle straight in the gun. He baited him into coming for now. Salty fish behind right now. It does end up whipping on the stab. Needs to be careful. Clockwork taking down Raja. Funky going down too. Um, Shades on 100% crits. Uh, we know what's going to end up happening here. Mr. Steve in the flesh is going to probably get it and they're going to try to clean up on things. Um, they do end up moving in. We do have, look at Scout running. Are they going to force? Are they going to pop off this? No, they're going to let him go behind because who cares? Who that was they don't a really, really nice ambassador headshot there by Salty Fish onto Ash, and he's managed to use the. Uh, use his sapper to take down all of Ash's uh, equipment as well, so all of his buildings have been taken out of the equation. Ash's uh, engineer spree uh, taken to an untimely end by some big play by Salty Fish. Indeed, so uh, I do would like to see, we'll see if they have any kind of offensive stuff up. They are bringing people into the teleporter, so I'll uh, be able to do a little bit of work here. They kind of need to put some pressure on the car right now, but uh, continuously there's maybe just one random Froyo player always behind them right now. They're definitely taking advantage of extreme movement. They've switched over to two scouts again. Uh, when Blaze just raining rockets on you, he does get into a little bit of a scrum with the pyro over here. Uh, ends up taking out the pyro, ends up taking out retro, so uh, looks, looks like they're kind of holding pretty steadfast with the cart underneath this little area. Uh, we'll see if what Blue can do to perhaps change that. Oh, they've just uh, lost Uncle Dane there along with his sentry gun and Muzel going down at, at the same time. Everybody from the YouTubers needs to regroup and try and push this one. Blaze is taking a lot of damage there. Nice pipe from King Raja. Takes down the Roman soldier from Froyotech. They've almost got that overcharge up as well. A race that move in around the uh, around the second point is actually going to pop off that quick fix. He needs to be with the rest of his team in order to connect with them and give them that. But the crit squeak has been popped off. Look at that pan frag once again onto Clockwork. Uh, King Raja going ham or going pan, in fact. In fact, definitely not going ham. Oh, he's absolutely going pan right there. So yeah, Clockwork is just completely just racking up frags, but 
his kryptonite might be this Raja charging at him with a pan. I think we've seen him die like three times to it, but I'm pretty sure he'll be happy trading 9, 10 kills for one pan death any day of the week. So, uh, Array 7 spamming some uh, arrows. He's, he's, he's got to get in. He's got to help his team out. Um, they are deciding to go up top, which I do like as a strategy. I would like to see more charges from him. I don't know yet. I think we've actually seen him build up a complete charge in a, a decent bit of time. Uh, I agree with the decision to get the height advantage here. I mean, who doesn't agree with that? Um, with, but with Clockwork down below, just kind of waiting there. He's waiting. He's saying, peek me, boy. Peek me, boys. Clockwork versus Scott Shaw. Eh, that time, he definitely got the best of Scott Shaw. So, um, he, look how far Red is pushed up. Could this be a mistake, Sideshow? The might be overextended slightly, but it'll take some uh, great work from the YouTubers to be able to collapse on them. They do have all of the high ground, but Clockwork is just hitting headshot after headshot. Look at that, another one onto the scout of Musos after he took down Barrel straight into his face, and with Clockwork distracted, Scott Jaw is able to take that frag. Array 7 nearly got his quick fix up, but uh, he doesn't seem to be dishing out the heals quite as well as his counterpart. Blood is in behind, but does get taken down by Retro, and here comes that quick fix. Oh, the great quick fix. Pyro plays to take down everybody from Froyotech there, who was all around in that corner. Banny, the last one to die of Afterburn. Ash and Clockwork, the only ones left alive. It's a scout and a sniper hanging around the car. They can't go down here. This is the opportunity for the YouTubers team. They need to push this one fast, and they need to push this one all the way to the end if they want any chance at a decent time. Indeed, they are right now. They do have the heavy moving up while everybody else is capping. I do like this strategy. Jimmy does go down, jumping up ahead right now. There is the cap. There's the cap from Blue. Um, as we spoke on, Red got a little extended there. They got a little cute with their crits creep, and well, the counter to that was uh, a quick fix pyro. So, jeez, uh, oh, Uncle Dane and all his glory going down in all their glory right now. The pyro kind of up in Froyotech's face. They can't really do much versus right now. He did hit a few good reflex right there. With the heavy holding house, I wouldn't really, really, really push into it. But the problem is, every time they're just they're getting a little bit of momentum, Shade just always seems to have his. <laughs> Well, Casper's Curse, the second Shade was about to use his uh, Crit's Creed right there. He does end up getting stabbed right there, and Clockwork going down from Array 7. Whew. This could be a nice little uh, change of pace for Blue right now. We'll see if they can move up, and uh, they are what, using, what is that, the Buff Banner they're using over there on that side? Yeah, um, Buff Banner or Cruncher, perhaps. Yeah, it's the Buff Banner coming out of Blaze, but it has faded now as Retro's pinned him into a corner, but with a bit of help from Banny. They do manage to take him down to what has fallen though to that flare gun afterburn. And with two players down from Froyotech and three players, now four players down from the YouTubers, they do still have that player advantage, but it's going to be slowly dwindling. Only Shade and Clockwork left alive here. And that Shade on 55%, if they can push really quickly, they might be able to pick up both of these frags as well. Clockwork standing on top of the court. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was happening. I mean, he kind of got like stuck in the car and ended up getting headshot, and I did hear him getting hit by a pan at the same time, so uh, the beautiful havoc of, of this map sometimes is too wonderful to pass up. Um, with what 100% Chris Creek Shade, um, he knew that was in Shade's face, got him pretty low. Shade did hold it, didn't push off. He's probably ended up using his Chris right now, but uh, Blue has taken the map room. Um, Scott Shaw taking down Shade on the back end of the play, which uh, is definitely going to help him right there. And we hear Funky just completely rapping everybody with that. He takes a minute to eat his sandwich and see if anybody finds him right now. Clockwork turns around for the quick 180. Does not get it. He ends up getting taken down by the Scott Blues, pushing this card down, Sideshow. They could actually cap here. Our boy Steve does have a few stickies up on that little pull, but will, will that be enough right now? Can they hold on the onslaught? And they're going to be... Uh warming around this last point here, the health really bad from the YouTubers and uh, Froyotech are going to be able to solidify their position a little bit, but look at that, the crit pan once again coming out from King Raja, slams it into Blaze's forehead there and uh, <laughs> he destroys himself, uh, yeah, absolutely, can we get some foreheads in chat as a Please, memory of forehead. Blaze's forehead and uh, and how he got, just got absolutely caved in there by a King Raja golden pan. 
Indeed, so we have all the toys are set up again. They are here's here's the thing that's going to let them cap if anything. It is that I'll teleport. Like on top of having the numbers, you know, nine versus six pushing in here. Um, well, Clockwork's well, still hitting the shots left and right, so that's where that's going to say. But he guys are going down right now. But look at that instant triple kill, quadruple kill for the one. What's that quintuple? Can we see any more? He is just ravaging the opposition right now. That heavy teleports in. Guess what, baby? You're number six. So. Uh, with Retro hiding in there, I would not leave your spot, Retro. Stay far, far away. He is chilling in there. Maybe he can get a little pick here. Oh, he's charging out a little too fast. He doesn't go through the sticky, so you will not be number seven, my friend. Backside, I do hear Banny going down to the charge. <laughs> Gold man, my God. It's so good every time I see Raja uh, just accelerate there with his, uh, with his charge. Uh, I love it. I love watching it. It's so fantastic. The crit pan is something beautiful, man. We know it's happening too because that, that demo man scream as he's doing it doesn't matter where you're on the map, you can absolutely hear it happening. And all you gotta do is see and look in your upper right, and we will see that. I hear that was I've heard a noisemaker, I've not heard one of those strange noisemakers for so long. It's just what else? Why not? Why not? Let's go. I thought that was something in my house. I shit myself. The same. I looked around, I'm like, is something busting into my damn room? And <laughs> no, instead, it was a strange noisemaker going off. The one that just picked up a 13 kill streak there with that latest crits coming out of Shade for Muse. I was saying, oh, can't quite get the frag. Salty Fish going down as well. But uh, that was just a distraction. Salty Fish popped off his. Oh, that's unfortunate. Popped off his dead ringer, but is going to die for real that time. Goes down to Banny. And the rest of the YouTubers have to gather themselves for one last attack on the fortress here they need to be able to cap this last point it's so close the card it's so close but they just can't quite manage it yeah they're trying to move up right there clockwork does pick up scotch rock pushes up but as uh, he doesn't really, really mess with it he's chasing muse out right now look at oh look at them looking at each other oh he's running away he's gonna get this scout he knows where the scout's hiding he needs to be careful ah, oh oh he's like what you're saying come up here boy i'm gonna show you my scatter gun and uh I, wh whether that's a euphemism or not uh, i'm not sure but he did end up taking him down so you need to be careful with jimmy moving in and every all the blue team with their over buffs with clockwork going down there that could have been the catalyst and maybe end up capping this point uh they, they, what do you think about blue's hiding they even have the sentry gun up over top of everything else we played badwater enough to know when the offensive team puts that offensive sentry gun up there it's usually pretty damn good and going down those spam rocket from jimmy you saw it coming from miles away he decided to jump in the air instead of dodge it so uh mini uh, sentry picks us two look at this shade and ash going down to uncle day in the ng main uncle the fantastic day. engineer position for that the uh, sentry was just perfect and the little mini sentry just going pew 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 pew, pew but it puts out a massive amount of damage over that amount of time and I mean that is a very long time but with the amount of defensive capabilities this youtuber team has they could match that Oh, they, easily yeah, could. they could definitely match that yeah for sure like they know they know where to put their stuff up I, I'm curious all right so Uncle Dane, Uncle Dane, our boy the NG. Wait, let's see where he puts this. Let's see where he gets. He sets up shop right here. It's going to be the defensive positioning and holding that these guys know and you know well, very well from playing this map continuously is going to be quite imperative. He's setting up in the standard spot right now. Um, I, maybe Blue's going to roll up and ma ma maybe maybe roll up the right side and pick at his gun. Do you think we're going to see Clockwork perma sniping a gun on offense? Because right now. Benny. Look, look look at the class lineup they have right now. Do you find that fascinating? One, he's going offensive Crits Creek, which can bite him in the ass, but, you know, as long as Red gets off their Uber charge and defends the people getting critsed upon. Oh, do you hear that again? Did you hear that again? That I did. Maker. I think a cow is infiltrating my apartment. <laughs> So right off the bat, let's see if uh, C-Dub can hit anything right now. Um, he is end up going Sniper. Uh, no, nothing yet. Something to notice is Blaze switch to direct hit. I kind of like that. I hear, do hear Raja charging in. No kills yet. Can you imagine that? Salty Fish defending the first point. He ends up going down himself, and Clockwork takes down Raja. They may be able to push this right through the tunnel and quicker than we like to think. Um, the gun will do work. But if everybody keeps going down like they are, and Uncle Dane, his toys are going to get broken very quickly. Lo and behold, there they go, sir. That's so unfortunate. The one are bombing in and manages to pick off the engineer instantly. And that's such a priority target. Here comes the Uber Charge, though, and everybody's going to melt in the tunnel area. 
is out with that bonk. He's going to be able to chase Shade all the way back into spawn. Shade doesn't go down though, and he still has that crit squeak active. They're going to come up the top left hand side here with Duwana and Bernie. The crit is about to be popped off here from Duwana. Duwana calls Medic for it, and as no, he's not even unleashing it. He's decided to hold it just for a little longer here. He knows that they'll be able to get the Franks without even using that crit squeak. Saving it for another point, perhaps. Jimmy blasted so high up to the air. Does eventually crater. He falls to a clumsy, painful death. Down goes the, uh, the dead ringer of Salty Fish. He responds to attempt a pick onto Shade once more. But it's quite easy to tell that they're running a spy when you've only got six players alive yourself. Oh, not, she's not oh. easy enough. Banny goes down there to a swift frag. Oh, crap, we're not down to 10 HP. Be careful now, Do you really think he's going to push <laughs> Oh, my oh, God. He's out just running in against the frag there. Easy frag. He's dominating. He's domi Did you see that in your kill feed? He's have dominating clockwork. That's fascinating. Pretty easy. Too easy for Muzelk. He's... He didn't uh, too easy. Absolutely, he's... Oh, and Shade drops! Shade drops his Chris Creek to Muzelk as well. They he's waited coming so in long for a huge that. play in behind. And Bunny hanging around in this trap. Many opportunities to use that and, you know, give Duwan another 13 kill, but uh, you're just kind of maybe getting greedy with it a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Waiting for far, far too long to be able to use that Chris Creek and ends up dropping into Muzelk on 230 ping as well. Absolutely slamming that. Defensive. They got. They do have the gun up where they wanted right now, and it is spamming down. I will say, as long as Ash is being rushed, look at. Or excuse me, Blaze is being rushed. They could be able to get this. The, the red team could have found a little foothold right here uh, with Banny behind. Uh, I don't. You, ne you never can be safe. But Clockwork going down to the heavy. I, I. I don't really know if these guys maybe know how to take off the average red roof defense. I mean, we, 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 we've done it when there's 12 people on the server, but when you only have six people and you're throwing bodies in one by one like they are, look at this, they've got the pyro spamming next to the dispenser, they've got the level three gun up and the heavy carrying top, the heavy does go down, needs to be careful because the career comes, the Chris Creek, the Wano with four kills, pipe the gun, pipe the gun one more time, baby, doesn't need to because Ash takes it out. So Blue, as I spoke right now, Blue ended up did taking, excuse me, they did take the roof. Salty Fish goes for a stab on Shade, ends up failing it and Banny will chase off Salty Fish. So, Red's defense, where would you like, do you think they got a setup on last right now? Is there a possibility of maybe holding a little ahead of that? Because they kind of had all their eggs and then let's hold the roof basket. I'm afraid I'm not listening to a word you're saying because I was distracted by the box strategy from Salty Fish. He whipped out that Metal Gear Solid spy in a box strategy that I'm so fond of and oh, it yes. dazzled me completely. I'm just waiting for it to pull it waiting for him to pull it out again because I'm sure Fruity Tech have never come up against a box before they can stab you in the back, so that that's a surefire strategy. Then forget about all the rest of your strats. Salty fish release the box. Please it. Please get in the box. Again, in the box, box sideshow, so oh my god. He's coming in behind them now actually, but before you think of storming forward, they've got everybody onto this card. And uh, as they come in behind, there's only four players left alive from the YouTubers. This is going to be a phenomenally fast time on uh, a map that was not favoring them whatsoever. The sign kill there from Clockwork onto Muzel. And uh, Shade again dropped by Retro, but I think it's all a little too late here. No, they might have just saved it. It's only plays alive. And he is going to get taken down. Duwana, where's Duwana hanging out? He's just rolling out, trying to get himself into the fray. But uh, the YouTubers are going to have a bit of a breather there and a, a little bit of time just to get themselves sorted again. Mm -hmm. They have time to, to set up a nice little defense here. Uh, if Blue is going to push through and they're going to change this around, they can't win with raw numbers. But if Clockwork continues to hit headshots like he is, Scotcha and then Salty Fish going down, obviously dead ringing, but still. This is making them a lot of room. Clockwork is space underscore created, so we'll see if he continues with this trend right now. With uh, Red's just pushing up a little too far, so the car being pushed back as far as it was. This is where you chill around last. This is where you kind of guard and protect your little sentry gun that is so eloquently set up. 
Uh, the Heavy is spamming from above, but I don't really know if it's going to be enough. Duwana can easily edge it, and he's edging that sentry gun. So uh, with the Heavy dropping down, spamming down into him, but eventually getting taken down, this is Blue's chance to shine. Blaze moving ahead to uh, spawn camp a little bit, ends up getting one absolutely sky-high in craters. <laughs> Uncle Dane taking him on a, on a, on a ride at the merry-go-round at Brick Park, I guess you could say. So uh, Raja is defending very well. That... I did not think Red was going to defend here. Not me neither, but uh, they managed to get even more mini sentry action onto Ash, and then with uh, Shade and Pokemon being found just at the end there, but Banny's in. Oh, what a shot. Scott Jaw ripping the head off Banny's shoulders. Too easy for him. Uh, Ray 7 has that Uber charge, but uh, the sentry's are actually going to find the frag. He was going in for the Uber Soul, but. Doesn't really matter. He can hold on to that Uber just for a little longer here. There's going to be another push coming in from Froyo Tech. And the Ray 7 has that Uber. He can save his team. He can save the Sentry. And uh, they can try and buy themselves a little more time. Still another 10 minutes though that needs to be saved. Man, if it get, the Uber does get forced there, I don't know if it was kind of a here comes the Crowberry Uber or not, but. Uh the Uber had to be used there. This could be what Blue needs, but with, with them just losing members like this, they need to be careful. Banning going up behind does end up getting some frags. Taking out Array 7, like he's so good at killing those medics, gets to play Scout again. I'm sure he's missed it, actually. We'll see if uh, you never know. You never know what we're going to see out of the band, man, or, or, or Daniel Vincent himself. So uh, with Chris Dickey's coming in, they need to be careful. But look at that gun. Look at that gun. Oh, no. It's it's dead. It's dead, Jim. Oh, the gun is dead, it's back alive, and it's shooting Dewana right in the damn face. With news up behind him, they can potentially do this. They're, look at only a scout on the cart, and he is getting unsawed. He li a Ray 7 literally sawed him, pushed him out from behind the cart, and the damn gun took him out right there. It was hilarious. Uh, that was fantastic. Well, you think have a Banny into that little window area. He's trying to edge the gun, but it's so weak. Dane just arrives just in the nick of time there to be able to repair his sentry up to full health. He'll set up that dispenser as well, make sure that they are ready to repel yet another push as they get their spawns in and start healing everybody up. Shade's almost going to have his Chris Creek active. He's going to pop it off in just a few seconds on to Blaze. Blaze pops it off here. And, uh, and oh, Jake goes down to Buzelk in the background. Big play Another from Buzelk. Another hand kill. Charging up under one. You know, Scott's old, old boy Steve's not going to like that. Getting absolutely charged. Turn into a, a nice little statue on the ground right there. Rest in pieces, my... Actually, I guess rest in one piece, my friend, because you did not get give. You got golden pan. So with and Blaze Clockwork blowing his horn... got annihilated by a reflect from Blaze. Blaze shot a rocket. And Retro just reflects Blaze's rocket straight into the sniper of Clockwork. The gun destroys Ash. him. He finally went spy. They got impatient enough where they finally went spy. So, did you see and that? he got destroyed. Uncle Dane defending his in, uh, his sentry perfectly there. Removes the sapper. The sentry does the rest of the work. Blows Ash to pieces. And you're right. They're holding on to this last point for a long, long time here. Absolutely great. This is this is if there's one thing these guys are good at is holding bad water last. This is getting very exciting right now. The gun, oh the gun going down. That could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, my friend. Blaze and everybody edging the point right now. Red may not get their spawns in time. No, they are hitting a spawn wave right now. Is it gonna be enough? There's enough players up right now. They do have a spy taunting Ash. Taunts on top of the cart. Jimmy jumps him and says, You're gonna taunt in my house. Nah nah nah. Hey yo, it's a one-two punch. Goes good, goes down. Side the cart. They can't stop the cart, sir. They can't at all. Every down it's a full wipe here from the YouTubers. And I think they had to hold on to that for about another six minutes, but they just couldn't manage it there. And uh, Froyotech are gonna take the second map as well. Wow, what a performance. That was a nice one. That was a valiant effort. When, when, when the YouTubers did get pushed back into that corner right there, they, they, they held off for, what would you say, like, a, a long damn time on that last point right there. Like, like Frodotech was kind of looking a little confused as they tried to push in. You know, Shade kept dying at a wrong time. You know, the gun, they seemed to have a little more trouble with the gun. And maybe that is because they kept using crits in general. But uh, when Dewana was fragging like he did, you know, why not? So definitely, I, I, I like that. I like that defense from the YouTubers right there. So it ma makes me feel good. Makes me feel good inside. So go with that, though, we're going to the third map. You know what this third map is, Sideshow? It is one of my favorite maps in the world.
I don't know whether they want it enough in the chat. I, I've seen some people say, we want Gravel Pit, we want Gravel Pit, but uh, I haven't seen them really in an uproar. I need to see some more, uh, I need to see some more enthusiasm from the chat before we take it over to Gravel Pit Buick. I want to see the chat absolutely the chant. erupt. Yeah, I want to see the chance for Gravel Pit. I want to we see want them Gravel supporting Pit. the YouTubers through this. Uh, they need to take at least one map here. Hydro. I see some <laughs> some some votes for Hydro. This is not a negotiation. This is not some kind of uh, democracy here. We are going to Gravel Pit. I'm just trying to stir you into a frenzy. We're going to Gravel Pit whether you like it or not, Matt CV. So uh, let's take it over there right about now. What do you think about Gravel Pit in this matchup, Buick? It's 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 once. I mean, here's what's going to happen. Clockwork's going to snipe. Clockwork's going to get kills. But is that going to be enough on gravel pit like like we could have the same kind of situation where they could have issues with the gun you know you do you know obviously you know the sentry gun is going to be in a nice place um I, i'm just so curious it's seriously i'm so curious to see what kind of lineup they will do further tech has not had to play gravel pit for how long do you think how long has gravel pit been out of this freaking rotation unfortunately like two years three years or something like that was the last gravel pit match like i don't even know if they still know how to play it nobody even pubs this map anymore we'll see if uh, they can shake off the rust they definitely played it enough we'll see if they can shake at off some the rust, point though. yeah at some point so if anything the youtubers may have a little advantage on playing this map more recently whether it's making a, uh, a funny video or you know maybe just pupping with your chums and friends you know i i, I I honestly think if the YouTubers are going to take a map, like it, it potentially could be this gravel pit. We saw Froyo when they were trying to push like kind of a last point when there was a gun and when there was stress and when Shade was continuing to use Crits Krieg, like we saw them have a little bit of trouble pushing last point. That could come into effect right now. So we'll see. I don't know. Carries over. Do you expect a lot of op classing from Froyo Tech? Um no, I don't think so. I think Froyo Tech will stick with uh, maybe on the defense. On the defense, they might run a heavy, perhaps an engineer, sit them in shadow, see if they can defend B. Teams normally decide to defend B rather than splitting their defense over A and B. Even with the Highlander setup, even with nine players, I think you're better off concentrating your forces on one of the sites rather than trying to split them across both and then falling back to C once you've lost A and B. Uh, B is the easier to defend of the two, so that's where teams normally set up. You do occasionally see some crazy A strats when it was last defenses. played. Yeah, yeah, yeah they I've were incredible. Yeah, yeah, they were amazing. If teams manage to pull them off, they're always fantastic to watch. We'll have to see if Royte try and do something like that, but uh, oh, but uh, it looks like it's actually going to be uh, uh, the YouTubers on the defense first off. So Free Tech are going to be attacking. So we'll see what they run. They might still be running that sniper. Clockwork was hitting some crazy headshots um, when he was playing sniper in the last two maps. So uh, perhaps they'll stick him onto the sniper, see if he can bring up some headshots on what is a very wide open map as well. Have we got any uh, any changes as well to the lineup? Maybe the YouTubers are not quite feeling it, gonna throw some classes around, give some people a, a chance on some different classes. Right now we're seeing we got some pre-game things jumping around. We do have two demo men, but I think this might just be the old uh... Gravel pit. There is a nice little roof syndrome. Let's jump on it and smack each other around. You know, pre-game type thing. It's like, really hard to tell right now because I do see what two demo men and two soldiers on the defensive team right now. Uh, from what I can tell, Retro will be staying Pyro. Raja, obviously. Oh, Raja, Raja. Uh, he's gonna want to pan the hell out of some more people because that's been one of the most entertaining things of the night. Seeing him charge in arms flailing screaming and turning somebody into a golden statue has been absolutely wonderful i imagine dane's going to stay on engineer ray seven will be on medic himself scott shaw looks to be sticking on sniper you know I i've i've actually liked that sniper duel there's when red or excuse me the youtubers are per i have been able to maybe make clockwork turn around for a second or just give him a little too much to stress out about i've seen scott shaw take him out a few times as good as clockwork's been doing uh scott shaw hasn't gotten the upper hand a few times so it could happen again there is a lot to deal with as an offensive sniper on this map you know this absolutely yeah scott shaw has been getting some decent exchanges in the sniper v sniper <laughs> and uh We'll have to see whether he can put up something 
similar on this last map as well so uh, I think <laughs> they're, uh, they're they're just discussing I think Froyo Taker might need a Merc as well Ash is just a little kid so he's had to go to bed unfortunately or something like that you know so uh, he, Ash is only 11 years old so he's uh, he his bedtime should have been a long long time ago but yeah, his uh, his parents let him stay up just to play this game, you know, entertain you all. So, uh, a shout out to Ash's parents. Shout out to his parents. You know, they they did make that deal. As long as you don't get embarrassed by a few YouTubers, you know, we'll let you keep playing. But we'll, as as we mentioned a few times, uh, after he seeing did. him get completely, uh, what was the term I used? Dirty work the last map. You know, yeah, his, his he got obliterated. Ash, it's bedtime, my friend. You know, if you're if if you're dying, if you're if you're not getting perfect DPM and you're dying, to this team of nine, you know, nine men, it's you're out of here. So, uh, looks like, looks like it might be Merc time right now. We let's let's hope they do uh, rectify the situation adequately at uh, adequate speed. But uh, for now, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice little five on them. So, but Froyo has enough connections. They know enough people. Where I'm sure they can pick something up. Uh, Kudos to Duwatna, who does have something to do at 5 a.m. Eastern. I know he's Eastern, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he lives, does live near me. He's Eastern, and he has something to do at 5 a.m. He, I think he's just pulling an all-nighter to play in this. So. Uh, kudos to him for doing that. Uh, I do know, actually, some of Froyo is Eastern as well. Um, I know for Vandy it's only what? Player? I hope, you, I hope oh. you're not pausing there for me to fill in with time zones, because I do not <laughs> have a clue. America is an absolute mystery to me in terms of time zones. You guys are so wide as a country. You take up half the Earth, you've got like plus five, plus six hours of time difference between West and East Coast. It's insane. And, and, and like, so, it looks like, wait, it looks like Ash did join the game. I, I think I was just messaging with Ash is joining the game. Do you think he's oh, going to get his parents enough. to let him play then? I think actually he was staring at his grandparents tonight, so maybe they're not as strict. Like, uh, uh, yes. I think, uh, like, uh, Tuesday's a sleep overnight for, for Ash. So he should be able to stay up a little bit later, maybe. He, uh, he's had his chicken nuggets and his glass of milk, and now he's going to go to bed. <laughs> he's had his chicken nuggets as well, absolutely. So, uh, uh, there is word that the teams are full and we will be starting soon. Let's see if it, oh, they look like they're switching off some classes. Um, I say that as I see double spy on red, so, um, something to note though, as we mentioned, and I want to keep pointing out, is quick matchmaking around the corner and considering both of these game modes, both of these teams, both of these representations will be supported as far as I know in matchmaking. Um, yeah, I just keep like looking at the weapons with no whitelist because you know it's going to be, it, it's whether it's a pick and ban system or whether it's no holds barred, like this stuff is going to be legal. And from what we've seen so far, I think the most interesting thing might be just Raja using the pan and smacking some bitches around per se. Yeah, yeah, they didn't really use the, um, some of the more kind of overpowered unlocks. Uh, we haven't really seen them being used uh, that much or to particularly great effect. It's been interesting to see that, uh, you know, even when you do have a, uh, a completely open whitelist, some of the, the the weapon choices are fairly similar to what just gets used normally with weapon uh, uh, with weapon blacklists and things like that. So it's uh, certainly interesting matchmaking just around the corner. We don't know quite when uh, yet or what format it'll take, but... There are those uh, 6v6 and 9v9 things in the code, so uh, perhaps that's uh, somewhere to begin creating your conspiracy theories, but we have gone live here. This is our third and final map, and it's CP Gravel Pit. It's the attack and defend map that has been loved by Highlander and 6v6 players the world over. Well, or used to be. It's been out of the rotation for quite a while now. And uh, Freddy Tech is going to be feeling a big hit of nostalgia, and these YouTube players are going to be feeling a big hit of optimism. I think they can take it. For sure, we'll see if any kind of off lineup as we go, as we expected. Ah, they're doing the double soldier scout sniper lineup right here, as we expected. I've only. Uh, there, there was always a point of contention playing offense on defense on Gravel Pit. I do know some New Zealand and Australian teams would do it for sure. They would go um, double scout one soldier sniper, but it looks like Froyotech is lining up as clockwork sniping offensively right now. Uh, we do have uh, Muselk just kind of 
chilling right there in spawn, maybe waiting to die. He has a little hammer out, he ends up going down. That's okay though. Uh, as they're moving into B, attacking, what, what, what do you see out of this offense right here? Banny goes down to the sentry gun, maybe not expected. Yeah, they're trying to get the force straight out of the uh, the medic, but what they don't know is... Oh no, the, no, they actually managed to drop them, sorry. I am looking at all the wrong things there. Ray 7 went down right at the beginning, so Banny and Blaze bowing in, man, to find the medic there on the defense, and that's going to give them a full uber advantage to be able to push with. They are stacking a point now so that they get a really fast cap on there, and with three players down, including both of the spies. Yep, that's right, both of the spies both from the YouTubers. Bunny oh, in with the market gardener! I cannot oh. believe it, I love that weapon. I just made a YouTube video about it as well. I absolutely love it. It's just about to be unbanned in Europe, and the Bunny is repping it big style here in this 6v9. As they're moving in right now, they're still holding B decently right here. You can keep it up with that rescue ranger antics right now. We'll see if Ash can win this uh, 1v1 against Scotch. It does end up taking him out. Uh, the sentry gun is spamming quite nicely. They're actually inside the point regardless of the spam right now. Uh, they're breaking his toys left and right, so they need to be careful right now. Um, this clockwork. He, oh, he's beautiful shot on the Jimmy right there. He's capping the point himself with the sniper rifle. Red's trying to just start throwing bodies into a meat grinder through this point right now. They need to be careful or they're all going to go down. Yeah, they are getting frags on the point here. Shades on 80% as well. It's only really Muse Elk, Muscle K, the Mused Elk, but uh, he is unable to do anything there. Muscle Elk. So, uh, Jimmy you know, gets a nice direct, actually, a bit of an airshot there onto Banny. He may be able to find the frag on Blaze as well, but Blaze scares him off with the Market Gardener uh, attempt. Moving in, ends up charging and feigning the charge right now. I think they're just going to more or less give. Perhaps they're just going to give him this point right now. They're moving up right now. Dewan and going down to a flare, was that? Or a scorch shot or something of the sort? I think Blaze is still holding his... Or excuse me, Shade's still holding his crits, waiting for when to use it. They're just going to milk it really, really hard right now. Because I think they're just waiting for the players to gather. This looks like this could be a nice opportunity for it. They are jumping up ahead right now. Uh, Blaze causing issues as always. Here comes the switch speed right now. It's going off and it is launching through this point. There is a counter Uber from Red. They got their Uber sideshow and with that they take out Shade with the Uber. Yeah, they're going to be able to take down Shade, but all the rest of these players have a scattered. Bunny's in behind as well. Onto a race 7. A race 7 hunting him down. They really wants that frag. Oh my god. Manages to find the frag there onto the pocket soldier of Royal Tech and a race 7 just bouncing into life. His battle medic skills proving just too much for Bunny to handle. So they do end up having to go to defend the C point. We have seen some epic holds over the years holding C, whether it's pin with guns or soldiers jumping up in airshot city on when, when you're defending C right now. So it uh, looks like they're just kind of setting up. They're waiting to set up their gun. Uh, Raja is defending, spamming quite effectively right there. He's going to the top of the pan, charging up. Guys, my offer to sticky ends up getting a pan kill on Jeez. Ends up charging around again, completely spinning around, and it's <laughs> Uh, so with this play, we do have d clockwork. Oh, this running spy going up top. You think he's gonna end up getting a kill? There's two X on the point. They need to be careful. Can anybody stop this Sasha? Absolutely not. And there's for the text time: three minutes and 51 seconds. That is rapid. That is so 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 fast. They need to drop out of shade right at the beginning here if they want to really make something happen. Are either of these teams running crits, Creed? Yes, it looks like Shade's actually going to be running defensive crits. Oh, yeah, they're going to A. No, no, he's been running. They're doing this strategy. So they're going to boost themselves up. There's a little glitch where you can just walk up the wall here. Does he get it? Oh, he, he got, got it. Oh, he almost got oh, no, he nearly did. This is not. An, this, this is a very frustrating jump, as medic. I have put wireframes on in a server just to practice this jump many times over. We'll see if he can get it. The best part about this, though, is even if you do beef it with the Chris Krieg, the beam can reach long enough where you can heal your Healy and spam. Oh, he almost has it. This is the most fascinating thing watching him try to do this. He made oh, it. Oh, he got it. He, he got it. it. And so now that he's up there, they're going to be able to fire the crits straight into the spawn they're gonna pop it off onto one and see who they can catch on the other side of race 7's only just now on 50 percent and they're building up the crits quick here it comes in the crits has been popped they realize that it's happening but they haven't managed to catch anybody there a race 7 
is just dicing with death, dancing with the Lord of Death, and uh, oh goodness me, I haven't even realised. Look at this line of Buick. How many heavies? Oh my God! Blaze just jumps in the middle of six heavies or five heavies. Takes out the mech. Oh no! But I do think you're in the this point. It's gonna be very hard to stop as many heavies as you move in, in my opinion. So, uh, well, Ash is gonna have something to say about that, and that's a uh, one-shot head, two-shot head, three. Can he get any more than that? That was actually a body shot. Uh, Raja is heavy, ends up taking him down before getting completely beat down from the mailbox from Clockwork. So, uh, the Iron Man defense seems to be effective so far, my friend. It does indeed. Perhaps the heavy is not the best option. Clockwork and Ash running the pyro and Sniper completely counter stratting them there. Freya Tech moving from place to place and now they have another Crit Creek to work with. Seems like the YouTubers need to be thinking of another G. The, uh, the strat of how many heavies was it? Seven heavies? It's uh, it's an unconventional strategy. It didn't work out this time. There comes another crit stick. He takes him out. A ray seven is gonna fall as well. And uh, Duana's having a ton of. Look at that! What a frag! Oh my God! Shade hit by the Sandman and stunned there for a little while. But Uncle Dane just cannot quite finish it off. But Raj is in for the crit plan. Is he gonna be able to take it? Oh, no, Duana wins the only one. Throwing bodies right on here. Uh, the Iron Man is working. They are giving up. What is 2x on A right now? They need to be careful. It's just a scout right now. Salty fish off on the scout. Uh, he could potentially do this. I'd like to see them completely rotating to B instead of flooding into A during this. And yes, look at that. They are actually capping B at the same time. Maybe they are going to spread up. Oh, did you just see that? Look in the kill feed. Look at the melee Shade is using. He's using the Vita Saw right now. That is actually interesting. You die, you come back with some of your uber charge retained. I kind of like that strategy. Maybe that's, you know, honestly, that's the first time we've seen him use it, so he could have actually been using it, and I bet he was this whole time. That's why we're seeing such constant crits from him. Absolutely, and uh, just while we've got all of you here as well, I'm going to plug the channel that you're currently watching this on. This is twitch.tv slash teamfortress.tv. Teamfortress.tv is the website as well. And we have a Twitter account at Team Fortress TV. It's essentially the hub for everything competitive uh, TF2, whether it's 6v6, 9v9, whatever. We're matchmaking, apocalypse hits, and we all turn to competitive as we no doubt will, because everyone's going to try that out, right? So uh, we are going to be the hub of competitive TF2. So give us a follow on Twitch, give us a follow on Twitter, and uh, have a look at that. We'll be bringing you more fun stuff like this as well, I'm sure. We do have, uh, well, I mean, it's Tip of the Hands coming up. That's not related to the TeamForce.tv channel, but it's some of the same guys, and that's going to be a hell of a blast. Absolutely will be so Ash hanging out earlier. And this is only 30 seconds left, Sideshow. Mathematically, they cannot do it, but uh, now, Cotton, the, uh, the, the hold was a bold strategy. We are going to see how it works out, and it did. It worked out decently right here. The Iron Man defense potentially can completely obliterate opposition if they're caught off guard. And it's going to happen. Broyo Tech, the world champions, do hold off, and they end with a beautiful crits over there. Oh, what a oh, oh, what have we seen? Like, what have we seen? I don't know. I, it, it's hard to describe this. I kind of need an adult after watching this. Uh, this is it's just it's it's it, not not even either team winning or losing. It was just such a havoc festival per se. So uh, uh, it, it gravel pit, beautiful map. Wonderful strategies can be involved. I did like to see how the YouTubers were holding and defending first and foremost. It kind of seemed like they were there on offense. I mean, we both knew we, it was Octo Heavy or Bust. And unfortunately, they only had seven heavies. So, uh, yeah, that's really one the more problem. heavy, I think, could have done it. Yeah, I think once you once you get to eight heavies, it's kind of like uh, an exponential. You know, seven is not quite enough, but at eight, you really maximize the full potential of the Octo Heavy. I mean, what you need in the Octo Heavy strat is a heavy looking at every point of the compass and everyone in between, you know? And they just left north, northeast uncovered, and that's where the headshot came from. I know. They had almost had everything absolutely guarded, but unfortunately, they that damn did north, not. northeast. You, you have to watch north, northeast. If you're not watching north, northeast, it's Headshot City. So, absolutely. Uh, Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an extremely 
extremely fun event. Hopefully it's been useful for just, you know, showing some different strategies some different viability. Um, you know, uh, we, we, what did we, we did see some, you know, bright spots uh, out of this completely we saw people new trying with some new weapons we saw some of those new weapons working we, we really this is just it, it's helping keeping the ball rolling for the hype machine that is coming as competitive excuse me competitive matchmaking that's what we're all looking forward to this so it's it's soon it's around the corner i promise you and it's going to be a wonderful thing it absolutely is this is going to be a lot of fun if this is anything to uh to to look at and take notes from the uh, the open white list the absolute havoc i'm absolutely looking forward to it it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun for everybody involved uh for all of the guys who were on the uh on the youtubers team as well you can check out their youtube channels uh i'm sure if you just google the names that you saw them using there you will be able to find their youtube channels most of them are fairly big there were some smaller names in there as well but check those guys out see what they've got to offer i'm sure there'll be some post-produced content from this coming up to uh, to arrive at your doorstep your metaphorical doorstep unless you're in the habit of having emails uh sent to you via snail mail you know like on a vhs if you have all of your youtube oh, subscriptions yes. sent to you via vhs that would be a fantastic maybe that is the Curry website opinion. that is the company that we need to make buick vhs like youtube deliveries i i yeah. think there's a market there's a gap in the market here and we need VHS to exploit YouTube it youtube deliveries by pigeon. absolutely by pigeons oh. the pigeons will have to deliver them you know this wow. you know this but how many vhs can you strap to a pigeon or how many pigeons do you need for a vhs I think you need at least two pigeons per VHS, and then it gets, you know, like you're into each other's wingspan, and I, I think we need to discuss this privately for a long, long time. Yep. I like it. <laughs> I, 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 I like that strategy. I'm thinking, I don't know, you know, a lot. It was for this way. It, it's going to be the most convenient way to get stuff delivered to you in the yeah, end. And that I, is I think the you most convenient way. Yeah. That's <laughs> the most convenient way you can keep up to date with your YouTube uh, your YouTube stars. Or you could just check them out at YouTube.com and search them in there. Or have a look at the Team Fortress TV thread where all of their YouTube accounts were linked. That's TeamFortress.tv. And uh, if you follow the Twitch channel, you can keep up to date with all of the other action happening. And I think we've got uh, some interviews with maybe the guy who uh, organized the event. Royalty King Raja. himself. Uh, yeah, the, the royalty, the uh, herald of the golden pan, the hello, caver, hello. caver of hello. foreheads and smacker of skulls, King how's Raja himself. He hello, everybody. How, hello, how's it going, Raja. everyone? Yo, Raja, that... Raja. That, that was match great. was hype. Yeah, yeah. That was, hello, that was hello. a really good match. Hello there. We're joined by a Ray Seven as well, and I can see Salty Fish in the channel above, so I'm sure he's about to be dragged in. So, uh, you guys, you guys took a bit of a beating. What went what went wrong for you, Russia? Yo, look. It wasn't that we took a beating. It was that the second the, okay, Badwater was supposed to be the map that we're supposed to win. Like, there's no way out of it. Everyone was like, you need to win Badwater. So that was the point where we knew that we'd have to come back, show the audience what we got. We got so many pan frags. It was it was oh, ridiculous. We did. We you did. You did. The kills were ridiculous. Like, it was crazy. Scott just somehow managed to headshot Clockwork, which, I mean, that's yeah, we going in his frag that. video. Yeah, yeah he, he definitely, not, not once, not twice, but like a good bit of times, too. It was this nice little sniper duel we had going on there, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it was beautiful. I, I love the I love the second match. I think the third match, Array got his uh, his stab at um, who'd you kill with the Uber Banny? Saw? Oh, Banny! Yeah, you got yeah, a fantastic, saw. fantastic battle medic frag there. <laughs> During the Badwater match, the hypest moment was uh, was when I, I didn't even realize I crit panned, but I got Banny somehow in there, and we were I was just going nuts in Mumble because I, I wanted to pan him really badly. Glad it I had to turn out. my volume down. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was. I was going nuts, dude. Oh, that but was yeah. good. It was a good round. It was a good round. I, I'm, I don't think any of us are surprised that we just got completely flattened. But you know, I'm, I'm actually just happy to be here. Honestly, you know. <laughs> It's yeah. always nice. It's always nice to to build in the ties with the different areas of uh, TF2. It's uh, it's a fantastic community. I love it when everybody comes together and has a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I and one thing I just want to point out because I know that 
Uh, some of our fans might be here. You might see us getting rolled by the number one team in, in, in Team Fortress 2 in the world. These guys are incredible. I think uh, every single turn, we were so scared for our lives because they were everywhere and anywhere. It was, it was very scary. So to, to fight these guys, the number one team, we were really tell. happy about that. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I, I really loved this uh, entire experience. It was fun playing against the best people. Oh, we can talk now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Salty. Salty, what, Salty what's like... on your mind, Salty? Okay, I, 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 I kept spamming this to everybody, but I just, I, I wanted to do so well, and then I got stuck with this thing, and with this, with this laptop, right? And, like, yeah. I feel like everyone's gonna be all, like, you know, he's spy man. I want it, I want it to, to be a good name for the spy mains, you know? Oh, we, no, we, we saw you get... We were definitely paying attention, and we saw you drop shade and kill shade a, a, a good bit of time. So okay, so I, you, you got no issues with that. You performed, you performed well, my friend. Okay, okay. I saw a fat ambassador headshot as well, <laughs> which uh... yes. we, we were swooning over that together. We were holding each other, thinking about that one. <laughs> I'm so glad. Oh, my voice cracked. No worries, <laughs> no, no. Hey there. It, it was a nice opportunity to go through every, every on top. Yeah, you know, we've all seen Fredo Tech play those classes. We all seen them get kills, but it was nice just rotating between all of you guys and just watching. Like we can name multiple good plays from on every map from every single person. It was really, really entertaining and fun to watch for sure. Yeah, um, we practiced on a powerhouse pub right before, so we knew what we were doing. Yeah, oh, we, we were we were going in hot. And, you know, this yeah. is this is our A game right here, which is pretty sad. But uh, <laughs> and, it, and it's 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 kind of funny because you know I I spend so much time thinking about you know how do I make make myself look good in a YouTube video? You know, like I'm for the longest time I did like all this combat medic stuff, you know, and now I'm plunged into like legitimate medic, and I have absolutely no fucking idea what I'm doing. You know, it's it's one of those things, and. I think Raja has the, has the same deal where people think that we're a lot better than we really are, you know? I, yeah. Like, I, I myself, I'm I'm silver, barely. You know, I, I played last season, and I don't know about Salty Fish. I hear Salty Fish is a beast spy, and I don't think... And oh. I think Raja played a demo, what is it, last season? Yeah. Yeah. What, what You were Steel, maybe? I, I'm not quite sure. I, really. It was Iron, I think. I'm yeah. Sure. Well, we're, we're kind of we're kind of in, in, in for it just to... I don't know. Maybe have have fun. You know, I I, I enjoy it. Yeah, that's, that is, you're right. It is what it's about. And I oh sorry, I, I I didn't know where I was going with that. Like I said, and and then I was like, crap, I got <laughs> what, nothing what, else what? to say. Yeah, just Come just on, trail brain. off. Yeah. Just you know, I saw a fly. You know, I was like, hey, how are you doing, fly? Oh goodness. I didn't I didn't actually get to um to say what like you know I actually meant like this is huge. I I have been looking I. I didn't think that I'd be so, like, hyped for this event, like, because it just hit me that I'd be playing with, like, all these, like, crazy people that do exactly um, what I do. Like, I don't, I don't really have, I don't know anyone in real life that plays CF2, but it's just crazy, you know, meeting, like, a bunch of people and friends that, um, like, doing what I do. Like, you know, play TF2, but then they also like uh, making videos about it or, like, putting all their life, like, you know, playing competitive. And it's just amazing, like, meeting all those people that, you know, have kind of the same interests as me. So it was great being here. No, that 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 is that's definitely one of what we're trying to accomplish. I mean, Roger, I'm sure you're trying to accomplish this too. We, we it's a nice little bridge between communities, realizing we all love the same damn game. Like, there's no reason why you know we can't play together, have fun. This is all in in the end. We're just we're all playing this beautiful, wonderful video game together. So the the connections we make through events like this or what have you are, you know, top notch. Competitive definitely. for YouTube, either way, Valve making money, right? No, of course, that's the most. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, that's the most important I, part. I think, regardless, like what, like when we first started doing this thing, and I, I was gathering everybody. It wasn't meant, like initially, I was gonna think about doing like community, uh, like YouTube versus community and whatnot. But I started to, like realize that I, I attended more Banny streams, I attended more Clockwork streams. I started like really watching their demos, and it occurred to me that like compared to TF2, is that a whole new world than regular TF2? But but there should, like you said, Keith, there should be that bridge. And I feel like this is obviously one of those events where people can just kind of talk. They can meet one another. And it's just, it's a really cool place. But I also feel like on that note, right before we started, people were freaking out. And they were just talking negative, like, oh, they're going to beat us and whatnot. But I feel like regardless if they beat us or not, I don't think it really matters. I feel like at the end of the day, as long as everybody had fun, that's what it's about, you know? 100%, my friend. Yep. Well said. Oh, I was actually getting nervous. 
Yeah, I was, I was incredibly nervous. Are you kidding me? Like, I, I'm, <laughs> I was pacing around, like, the room that I'm in right here, you know, just so nervous. Because I, I, I've never, like, actually watched a lot of Banny's, Banny and, you know, Team Froyo's play. I actually sponsored Ascent just because they had less donations. You know, I really don't know that much about them. And then now I'm plunged in this game, and all of a sudden I realize that, yeah, the hype is entirely true. You know, I was, I was completely right to be nervous, but... And in the end, I like like Raja said, you know, we're just having a fun, have, trying to have fun and <laughs> a lot of fun. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, it was it was good. So, yeah, I mean, it, uh, if you guys are looking, because like originally this was meant to go onto YouTube, so Array and I are both going to be uploading stuff from this event. So that's the place to go if you're looking. If you're from there, that's yeah, where you want to go to go check out the frags. Yeah, all you the guys highlights. can hear you, you guys can hear my reaction to the Benny the Benny Uber saw I flipped out i <laughs> yes. flipped out you guys get to finally hear that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone just had to like lean away from their headphones for a little bit <laughs> just to take off the headset for a yeah, second just take, just take <laughs> off the headset. <laughs> i i do have to ask though what are the top five most hype kills that you guys have seen throughout like all of them oh man okay so definitely you guys had to pick it's like Scott Shaw hitting Scott Shaw just like a legit one v one against Clockwork was definitely exciting for that. Obviously, Array Seven Zuber saw uh, it, it's as you know, salty with the ambassador. Like it's it's very it's hard to pick. Raja, you literally as I was talking to Sideshow about this, the second we heard the demo screaming, be charging <laughs> through the air, like you knew, you, we knew it was a very high percent chance it was going to end with a, a damn crit pan to the face, and it was it was it was beautiful. That. That was for sure a highlight, but everybody had some good plays. Uh, all right, I watched you, so it, just the little stuff too. So you guys are attacking blue um, on Badwater, and the heavy, you know, you're about to cap the second point, and the heavy stuck in that little nook over there, and you, he just needed the perfect two arrows to stay alive, and it's just something as little as that that keeps the heavy alive long enough where he can, sh uh, uh, Funky can shoot up on the roof scare the people away and you guys end up capping there like regardless of the the individual players uh you know and you know the channels that we saw from your guys team the, watching the stuff come together was a joy too you know watching the spy sap it's something as simple in tf2 watching the spy sap is the demo men spams the gun you know it's 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 all that stuff wonderful oh, shucks i'm blushing yeah <laughs> No one has ever said that our our, our uh, pan and uh, uber soft frags mattered. This is the first time, first time. <laughs> we we I I have to say though, us even getting one kill on them was like a hype moment. Like it started off being super hype. We were just going crazy over every single kill. Truly, right, really like an awesome moment. Absolutely good. Absolutely wonderful. So. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. Gimmicks lives matter. So, what? What else? What? What else do we got? What? What else do we got going on? We? 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 We got some. We got anything more cooking? We got some more. This. This was a damn fun event, and like, I. I. We need to see some more stuff like this in this community. We. We. we this is just. This is just. This is the first step. This is just the first step. We're gonna continue doing stuff like this. We're. We're gonna continue continuously bring these, bring these communities together. Yeah, so, let's take a moment and listen to Raja explain how difficult this was. Because I didn't believe Yo, it when he first told me, but you know, now it I'm was, starting to... It, it was really hard. Um, I, I, to be honest, I, I really have to thank... Because, Kevin, are you in here right now? Hi. Yes. So <laughs> what happened was that... So initially, this wasn't supposed to be like a pros versus YouTube. Like, this started off totally different. So when I actually got a chance to talk to Banny, he, had, he appeared on one of my videos. And I think after that point, I started, like, contacting Clockwork. I became friends with Banny, so then we started talking more. And then it slowly escalated into talks of us versus Froyotech. I mentioned that to Kevin, and then he started getting hyped about it. He started putting it up on the Slack. And then Buick and all these other people who came in to support that movement. I think that's what really made that first step happen. If, if we didn't have the TF2 backend, this would not be as grand as an event. So, like, thank you guys, like, first off. And yeah, I'd definitely. say... Yeah, like that was a huge effort. And then I think like timings was the biggest thing. So I had to contact every YouTuber, every pro player. I had to like make sure the schedulings weren't conflicting. Originally, this was planned for yesterday, but I feel like, you know, 
some things got moved, but yeah, timing was like the biggest thing to organize. But definitely, I feel like after watching this and being a part of it, I I want to start organizing way more of these and starting to get like more people in, involved. You know, I feel like we can definitely go further from here. Yeah, the community 9v6 thing is something that I, along with I'm sure a lot of other people were missing because it hasn't happened in like a year and a half, maybe two years. So it's it's really good that it happened, especially with Toth right around the corner. It's kind of getting me excited for all of the special events and stuff that's going to be happening there. Yeah, Tip of the Hats is going to be absolutely fantastic, isn't it? That is uh, that is literally this weekend. I'm, I'm craving it. I can't Our believe that it's not started yet. It's going to be an amazing set of events. I mean, if anyone hasn't heard of it, you absolutely should do it's, it. Is it fair to say it's the biggest event on the TF2 calendar? I think yep. it probably is. I, I would agree. I would. 100%. I mean, yeah. it's it's huge. It's a gigantic charity stream event running the entire weekend. How how many hours is it lasting for? Is it like it's Friday or Sunday? Or something? I think it's forty eight. Is it's it forty eight hours? Something like that. I'm not sure. It's it's a long, long time anyway. And tip of the hats, yeah. Someone's posted the link. Tip of the hats org. It's all for for the kids. But it's a it's a great charity stream event, and you guys should uh, should definitely catch it because it's going to be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so. one thing to point out, but sorry, sorry, uh, were you going to say something? Go okay, no, I was just going to say for tip of the hats. Uh, this actually, I read it on Reddit this morning. I thought it was kind of interesting. If you donate twenty dollars, you not only get a pin in game, but you also get a chance to win two golden frying pans and a quilt. I'm just saying that and a you quilt. should. I'm just saying that's that's damn good. That's, I'm more excited really about the good. quilt, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the quilt looks really. Well, cool. It's a beautiful quilt. It's a beautiful it's a quilt. Freaking fantastic quilt. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give your like tip of the hats to grandma right there. You know, hey, definitely. Hey. But the 100%. pin is nice too, right? The, the pin, pin is nice too. Nice. The yes, pin is yes, nice. of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I did the concept art. <gasps> Uber Chain. Oh, Uber Chain. Thank you. But did you, Uber Chain? Did you do the concept art for the quilt? Yep. Uh, yeah, actually, I did the source filmmaker stuff that's on the quilt. God damn it! D damn it! God damn it! <laughs> we can't beat her. She's too good. I'm yeah, everywhere. <laughs> There's no stopping her. There is no stopping. Yeah, definitely. Her. Yep. So, gentlemen, beautiful event, wonderful event. Um, any and any last thoughts? So sh sh shout outs to anybody, please. Just fire away, fire away. We're gonna start wrapping it up, folks. And, and any any last any last final thoughts? Go go for it. YouTube. Um, dot com. Don't Slash? say it. Don't, don't say, say it. it. Don't, do say it. it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. He's gonna do it. Don't do it. He's no. Don't no. Slash. Stop All right. You, you've only stopped your last <laughs> one. Saying, don't do it. So we're good. All right, guys. There we go. No, no. But really, and any, any Roger, any, any last, any last thoughts? Um, I'd say okay. So any last thoughts? I'd say tip of the hats. Donate twenty. Everyone, go do it. Just you do gotta it. do that. You gotta do that. Um, this weekend, go check that out. I'd say thank you all for just coming. There's no, like, particular shout-outs. Uh, actually, one person to get overlooked. Aaron, thank you so yes. much for hosting it, because I, I feel like we did gloss over that. Um, yes, some I want to throw in there about the that. Server. Um, yeah, shout-out to Trainyard Servers, which uh, provided the match server tonight. Uh, Kevin will link their Steam group in chat. Please show them some love, because without ser how can we play video games? without servers you can't that's the answer so thank you so much to train yard servers so if i had three thumbs they would all be up we're good to go definitely go follow them they have pub nights and whatnot so it's cool it's honestly i just love that it's a great community event all the youtubers that showed up you know we had our little powwow of course froyo tech for showing up thank you guys so much for that mm -hmm. i you know it's probably coming out of your guys' schedule so i really do appreciate that and yeah i think that's about it Coolio. Look out for more future uh, events and videos going to be up on Array and my channel. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Sideshow, on to you. On to you, baby. Any last final thoughts here before we sign off? No final thoughts. Just, uh... Sideshow. Hello? Talk about our MG. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I've been petitioning <laughs> to get the lock and load banned from ETF2L after... Wait. Even after the nerf, after King Russia absolutely mullered me twenty to two, I uh, could put up no defense. Oh, Zero and uh, defense. Oh. Uh, a happy birthday to Dashner oh, as well. Of course.
course. Oh, happy, happy birthday, Dash, Dash Nerd. Happy, happy birthday, Dash Nerd. Happy, 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 happy Baffin birthday, bro. Happy, happy birthday, Dash Nerd. Happy birthday, my friend. Yes, <laughs> and we yes, will yes, see man. all of you guys another time on Team Fortress TV. Make sure to uh, follow us on the Twitch channel. You'll catch up with all the other competitive action coming up. We've got uh, ESEA Season 20 and a big Razor Cup just announced. So we will see you again. Later. Yep. Peace. Later. Yep. Deuces.